I ran through the corridor and came to a large door. I pushed it open cautiously to reveal a room filled with mirrors. I took a step into it only to have the door slam shut behind me. Whirling around I tried to open the door but, just as I expected, it wouldn't budge. Only one way to go now, I guess. I held the count door closed for comfort as I walked further into the room. After a moment I realized something was wrong. Those mirrors, they don't show my reflection. Are they really mirrors then? Or just pictures? I was still staring at the mirrors when the lights dim again. Alright, I'm going! I started to walk again only to catch sight of something in the mirror. I turned to try and catch a glimpse of it, but it was gone. I continued walking only to come face to face with the sight of a girl in one of the mirrors. Immediately I spun around but the girl wasn't behind me. What the hell? The girl seemed to move from mirror to mirror almost as if showing me the way. Alright, I'm coming. I cautiously followed the trail until I saw it another ominous looking door. The girl now occupied every mirror and ammunition pointed at the door. Do I really have to... A nearby mirror shudders, sounding deafeningly loud in the silence. I'll take that as a yes. I hesitantly pushed the door open. Okay, this doesn't look so bad. Looks kind of like a witch's room or something. There's no other door, so whatever I'm supposed to do should be in this room. A quick survey of the room drew my eyes to a sheet of paper lying on the table. The spell of items lost. To find what you seek, gather those ingredients into the cauldron and stir fries. That doesn't sound too hard. Let's see, the items are... Once all the ingredients were in the cauldron, I stirred it three times. It began to bubble strangely and suddenly filled the room with smoke. Just as quick as it appeared, the smoke disappeared to reveal that one of the walls was no longer in place. Well, I've come this far. I made my way over to where the wall used to be and stared out at the dark stairwell it had revealed. Raising my hand against the wall, I slowly began my descent into the dark. The moment my foot touched the last stair, Lights blurred to light. In the middle of the room lay a single coffin. A tomb. Oh, I see. I hastily made my way over to it. On closer inspection, I could make out words crawl into the coffin. It's been cold and dark for so long. Will I never see the sun? I need to take her into the sunlight. The coffin is further to the ground, though. I don't want to open it. But I guess I have no choice. I took firm hold on the edge of a coven's lid and pushed. I pointedly kept my eyes away from the coven's contents until I had fully removed the lid. Then I stood myself before appearing inside. A doll? It looks pretty realistic, but it's definitely a doll. I let out a relief breath. Carrying a doll is a lot better than carrying around a rotting body or skeleton. As I lifted this surprisingly light doll into my arms, Far of the walls lead the way to reveal another set of stairs. I made my way to those stairs and looked up to see light at the other end. Could it be... I quickly made my way up those stairs. A few minutes later, I let our lift love as I emerged into the warm sunlight. I looked down when I saw the already light door getting even lighter. What the... The door had begun to crumble and before long there was nothing by dust. Good job, Miss Archer. The curse has finally been broken. For your efforts in this endeavor, your team shall receive 5 points. I look up to see one of the servants standing by the door. Where are Mr. Wolf, Mr. Bandages and the Count? They await you inside. If you follow me, I know that let me follow the man. He led me to our team room. I couldn't help but smile at the familiar sight of the three of them waiting for me there. I looked at the cow, but he looked away. You did great, Miss Archer. I would never have made it. It's true, he barely made it just watching. I gazed at the cow, not sure what I was expecting. Mr. Wolf and Bandages exchanged a look before looking at him as well. You did well, Miss Archer. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to shower. I watched him leave the room with a heavy heart. 
I'm gonna have to go after him. When I know that Sayuri had nothing to say, hold me back. Right, I know I put my foot in my mouth earlier, but are you sure it's okay to not go after him? I don't know what happened between you two, but watching you guys during the games, I know he really does care about you. Treats you differently from all the other ladies he flirts. Mr. Bandages whack Mr. Wolves across the head. Idiot, are you trying to make it worse? I need to go. Thanks. I left the room and settled down the hallways in the hopes of finding the count. I wandered through the hallways searching for even a glimpse of his cave. The hallways were empty. Damn it, count! How did you disappear so fast? Overcome by frustration, I let myself sit down a wall in the sitting position and cradle my head in my hands. I'm not sure how long I sat there before I heard a voice call my name. Miss Archer? Are you alright? I lifted my head to see Eric standing a little stretch away. You're not alright. He walked over and sat beside me. What's wrong? You look like you could use a shoulder to cry on. And I've been told that I'm a good listener. He was being so thoughtful. I couldn't stop myself from bursting into tears. After a moment, I felt his hand come up to gently quiet my hand until I was quite literally crying into his shoulder. He remained quiet and waited patiently for me to pull myself together. I'm sorry. I've cried all over your cold. I'm still covered in blood as well. I pulled away from him feeling embarrassed. I should get going. Are you sure you don't want to talk about it? I did say that I wouldn't mind lending you an ear anytime, Anna. I couldn't stop the tears from rolling down my face again and quickly used my arm to cover my tear-strained face. I heard him. I wanted to find him at... Anna. Do you need me to find someone for you? No, I, I don't even know what to say. Even if I didn't find him, after all, it's all my fault. I'm, I'm the one that walked away first, and my reasons for that haven't changed. I just, I see. But if you were the one that walked away, uh, then perhaps leaving him alone would be the best option. I mean. If you didn't care for... That's not it! I do care! I just... I just can't! If you care about him and the feeling was mutual, then why did you walk away in the first place? Wouldn't it have been a happy ending? That's exactly why I couldn't. You know my background. I'm not like the other guests. Why would that affect anything? Because... I'm afraid. I I'm afraid of what he would do once he found out. What would he say? What if he feels I'm unworthy or that I'm gold digger? I'm, I'm too afraid to find out. You? Afraid? You're the bravest woman I know. I'm not brave at all. You are? I have kept an eye on you for all the games and you have never ceased to amaze me. If you were me, I would not have cared about your background at all. I'm sure that if he really loves you, he'll accept you for who you are. Even if you're right, it's too late now. I guess I really blew it, huh? It's never too late, after all. True love conquers all. I gave him a light-hearted smile. Thanks. Even if that isn't true, I do feel a lot better. And really, Eric, a cur could get the wrong idea if you were too nice to them. If I wasn't governing blood and pining over another man, I would totally hug, hug you right now. You're welcome to throw your soul at me anytime. I let our giggle as I cut to my feet. Right, well, I should get going. I will need to wash off. Thank you again.